Hi, I'm Dave Coach. Welcome back to my channel. I've been giving some thought to some of the videos that I've been making, and a lot of them are kind of higher level, you know, targeted at people who already know what they're doing. I thought it might be good to go a little bit more beginner level and talk about some things that you may or may not know or be aware of. One of the things about photography is we're always out there all alone, all by ourselves. We don't really have a mentor on site to teach us how to do things and what we should be doing and what we shouldn't be doing. And I thought that was something worth addressing. So I want to do a series of videos that kind of are that mentor sort of thing that, that teach beginners and people who are new in the field not only what's proper to do and not proper to do, but things you may not know or be aware of or have thought about that will make your life easier in the field. And so this video is five things I think you should be doing before every shoot. The first thing you should do and do this before you leave your home or your office is to check your gear. One of the advantages to having a gear case like I do is all the gear that you need is all there in one place. So you just move it, put it in the car, and you're ready to go. My car, I leave always stocked for photography. So I know most of my gear is already in there. And the only things that go in daily are the camera bags with the, the freshly charged batteries and things like that you may or may not have a different way of doing things. If you're packing up your car every day, you need to go through and check that you've got everything. Tripod, light stands if you use them, you know, all those things. Having a camera case means that all my things are there. One of the reasons I really like the camera case is when you're closing up at the end of the day and you're putting all your gear back in, everything has a place. And if something's missing, you know it right away. So you don't leave shoots without all your flashes or all your gear. So that really helps you get organized and I think make sure that you have everything that you need when you get to a shoot. Speaking of the end of the day, when you come back from the shoot, you should, at the moment you pull in, grab your gear case, take it in, put your batteries onto charge, and dump your cards first thing. I don't care how bad you have to go to the bathroom, I don't care how much you want a drink of water or whatever it is that you drink, do those two things first. This is a lesson I learned in TV photography and it's been invaluable. You don't have time to not have charged batteries. And if you don't dump your cards right away, you can run the risk of losing your shoot. These are the two most important things you can do to help your next day shoot. So always, always, always put your batteries on charge and dump your cards immediately. Then go do anything else you have to do. But that should be rote. That should be something that you do every time you do a shoot without fail. At the end of the day, also, if you've had any problems with your gear, that's the time to start fixing it or find alternatives or do whatever you need to do to alleviate that problem. You don't want to do that the next morning and go, oh yeah, I remember, I need to do this. No, do it the night before so that you're ready to go out that next day. There's been a few times where I've thought a shoot was at 10 and it was at 9 and I get a call at 9.05, why aren't you here? So you need to be ready to roll in case you have to be someplace really, really quick. Again, something I learned in TV news and it's been an invaluable lesson that keeps me going to this day. Item two, when you get to the shoot, the first thing I do is I walk the complete space. Every time I do a walkthrough, I'm already evaluating each room for the lighting and what it needs to make it look good. I'm also pre-planning the shots already as I'm walking through. Another thing that I do is I look for things that I haven't seen in the last shoot, things that are unique to that home. And those are things that I'm going to stress when I do my photography because I want to bring out the individuality of each home. As I go through, I'm looking for those special things and I'm making notes of them to make sure that I shoot them. As I continue to walk through, I'm also feeling the flow of the house and the order that I'm going to put the pictures in when I'm done. 
all of these things come together to give you a more cohesive shoot when you're done and help you get through the house faster. When you're doing that walkthrough, a lot of times you're doing it with the homeowner or with the realtor. And it's important to listen to what they have to say about the house. The homeowner has lived there for years, most probably, and knows some of the special things about the house too. Listen to those and make sure that you focus on those because again, that will help show the individuality of that house and what makes it special and different. The realtor has things that they wanna stress so that they can sell the home. Listen to what they say because when you're returning pictures that help them tell the story they want, they're gonna look at you as someone who is a partner and who will help them sell the home. That will help you get more jobs. Step four is something that some photographers have a problem with, and that is staging. Once you've done your walkthrough, once you're starting to shoot your way through the home, you need to stage each of the rooms. Generally, I'm not gonna move a lot of the furniture. I'll move it a little bit, I'll fine tune things, but I'm not really there to move all the furniture. But I still think it's important to move the furniture to get optimum shots. I was talking with my friend Tara in Massachusetts yesterday and we were talking about this very subject. We were talking about where that line is between what you do and what you don't do. And she had a comment that I thought was really important and it struck right at the heart of this. What she said was, I do staging, not housekeeping. And I think that's the important distinction to make. If you're doing something to make a picture better, good, do it. But if you're doing things that the homeowner should have been doing when they were cleaning or setting up the house, that is moving glasses that are in the, the dryer rack or something like that, that might be going a little too far. Again, your mileage may vary. You may want to make that decision on your own. Sometimes if it's just a little thing, I'll move it. But if it's a perpetual problem, room to room to room to room, I'm either going to talk to the realtor and say, this place is not quite ready to be shot yet, or talk to them about postponing the shoot or something like that. It's not our job to clean a house. It is our job to stage a house. So that's something that I think we should do. And number five, I think you should review your shots before you leave. Actually, I think you should review each of your shots as you shoot them and make all the changes while you're there. But sometimes you may go a room or two and then you realize, oh, I should have done this. Go back and reshoot. Double check all your images, make sure you have everything you need before you move on to your next shoot. So those are five things that I think you should do for every shoot. You may have more ideas, great. Let me know things that you do that you think are important to do at every shoot. Thanks a lot for watching and may your next image be your best image.